about to get dirty. Absolute madness. Cool place to hang out though. I like it. All right, so here we are in the fish room, the temporary fish room. Now, the reason why it's like this is just moved here at a huge aquarium house. Now I gotta rebuild. Everything's been on the floor Why I figure out how I'm gonna really lay this place out and how I'm gonna end up keeping fish tanks and plants and all that stuff. What you guys will see in the future, what all I do with that part of this and lots to come. But I'm pretty much at the point I gotta show you guys before I start moving everything because this is all starting to get moved. The real build's starting to go. We're gonna start going up. As you can see, I'm prepped and ready for mini racks. Well, many of you guys have been asking for a video tour, so here it is. And with this fish room, it's gonna take some time. It's gonna be like a fine wine, but when it matures, oh my God, it's gonna be superb. And we're gonna go through a lot in this video. We're not just gonna show tanks off. I'm actually gonna teach you kind of what things are going on in here. Now, keep in mind, these are all no filter situations and setups. None of this has been water changed since I've moved, which was well over two months ago, almost three months now. There what I call some fancy mud puddles. And as you can see, some of the tanks here have some color to them, some life for sure. And I have a lot of experience with this from before the house previously that helped me know that I'd be able to have a fish room like this. So if you guys listen, how quiet it is in here. You can hear the lawnmower or at the church next door. No other sound. Yes, that's right. No airlines, no filters. Thanks, plants and water. My plants would probably have better growth too if I didn't have just 6,500K if I had more full spectrum lights. But these are $20 shop lights. When you're balling on a budget, that's where it's at. Would you get those on my website as the things that I use? There's a link onto the, there's a category on my website that'll link it to all that. And if you guys have questions about this fish room or why or how I do this, etc., etc., any questions, let me know in the comments. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a top five or ten questions and do a video rebuttal that will that will hopefully help you guys out with understanding why and the no filter and all this stuff to understand anything it may be that you may have questions on so that's what i'm here for to help so lots to teach you lots to show you guys in this video but since all this is temporary i'm not going to work too hard on it because this is all going to be moved this cannot stay here. All gonna get moved. But now we're just gonna do a quick run through of what all's here, what's going on, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. So I don't wanna make it too long. I could talk about this stuff forever. Hence why I have a Friday Night Live Q&A every Friday that I do. This was one of the only racks that I took from my last fish house. This is a 20 gallon high. It holds nine. And then I also took my, what I like to call the Cory Garage Rack because it was one of those two by four racks that was put on the cinder blocks like Corey from Aquarium Co-op ended up making a long time ago. I ended up using those tanks. So I've got all these from that. And then these are all just extra tanks that I had in storage space. Some were used for like aqua shellas and shows like that. Then I've got the pond system over here, little quarantine section over here, and then more random tanks over there. And you can see there is some algae growing in here just because I haven't really been able to mess with it. I've got really high pH water. As far as the uh, hardness, the water's not very hard, but the oxygenation comes out, gives it a really, really high pH, which can throw things off. So I want to avoid big water changes, but I just haven't had time to do them. I'm kind of a lazy fish keeper, I won't lie. And when you have so many aquariums, you kind of got to be. And the fish, as you can see, they really don't care. This is more wild to them than having a pristine clean tank you see i brought my rope fish here with me i do got plants trying to grow and help balance out now you do see a lot of algae you see some green water coming in here and there but the thing is if you have more plants see how this has a nice thing of moss in it it's helping absorb all this this doesn't have all that so instead until this grows out and overtakes that this is going to try to grow but if i do water changes i'm going to pull that out that way only that grows 
And over time, over time, that biomass will become enough to balance out these algae. Also, a lot of reason why some of these tanks have green water is the light is really low down too, which usually it sticks up on top, kind of like this. But that green water is actually really great for breeding. As you can see in here, I've got a ton a tiny little daphnia, but I've also got a bunch of little baby rice fish living off of them. And what I like to do is bring you guys to bring you guys to this divided tank that I brought back. You know, this divided tank's nice because I can keep green water in these sides. And I play musical fish with the rice fish. And what do you think happens when you take these fish from being in there, move them in with all the daphnia? That's right, they breed like crazy. Fish will sit here and breed all over things floating in the top. Then I'll move them out. Then you got babies everywhere. But if you look in here, there's Daphnia as well. So instead of them getting aggressive with each other as they grow up, they have the Daphnia to mess with. Then I can feed excess Daphnia over here, which makes them breed more because they get that live food. And then I've actually got the Lucipennis. I got the little sharks here, Cynodonis, Lucipennis. A little, little baby one. That uh, help keep the green water green with their waste and how much they eat all the time. And after I pull these babies out of here, move these guys over here, this will start turning green. Daphnia, it'll just keep flip-flopping. And if I really wanted to deal with, with this more, I would not do heavy water changes. Heavy water changes will actually exacerbate it, especially if you have a high pH of water coming through with a lot of hydrogen molecules, it'll really feed that green water. So you're almost better just letting it settle. I got some female pandas in here with a bunch of guppy grass, Anubiuses. That's a snow white Anubius. There's actually a bunch of buches in here. We've got the panda guppies and then the coral blue platies. So I'm excited for those. And then in the pond over here, see this Poco stem and octopus is really going these are actually the first first fish these are the first fish i've got here from the club that has made it through quarantine we almost got some new ones we got rice fish we got lots of rainbows here you can see everybody's kind of hungry a big anubius there air plant here we got some of that spanish moss over there we're growing out. There's actually shellies in here. There you can see one of the shellies. Oh, these half beaks are awesome. Look at that half beak. How cool. That's a live bear, those two. Male. And that was the female. Actually been spraying this. I sprayed this once with some hydrogen peroxide in a spray bottle. So I take hydrogen peroxide, put it in a spray bottle, spritz, spritz. It will actually help kill that algae on top. I didn't do it too much because I wanted to show you guys what was going on in here. But the big reason why this pond has a lot of trouble is because it's just a hodgepodge of plants. But look at that tiger bow. That stuff is crazy. Look at the stripes on that plant. But you can see it's just a hodgepodge. So we need more tanks. We need more tanks to separate all this stuff. And here I've got some totes and tubs, which I was gonna make an individual video about this because this is a nice little quick quarantine setup. So here I've got some punks, sea punks. I just got those at a recent club auction. Mommy and I crypt. Ton of Nuri Rosa Maiden in here. Look at the new growth, it's absolutely beautiful. That was the thing with a lot of these plants from the move to. It just took them quite a bit to transition because this water is a lot different from what we had. This is more on the softer side, about 140 TDS. We had 300 some TDS in Indianapolis. And so things kind of had to transition a little bit. But for the most part, it's been great. I got lots of Daphne and little totes. There's actually some there's a baby rainbow in here somewhere. A couple of random fire reds. Fuchsia's in there. Got my G-Max in here and actually a bunch of different types of plants like you got coral moss there. And there's actually pink flamingos and whatnot, but you can't see in here very well. But you see how it's kind of getting yellowish? That means the green water is starting to die a little bit. When it's, when it's super green like this, this is that healthy green water. 
That's good for Daphnia food. Now that we've made our way around here, we'll start working down this. And then we'll talk about the future here after this quick run through. Here we got some of Gary's rainbows. You can't really see them very well until you feed them. There's some. There's actually a bunch of blue dreams in there. I don't want to put my Daphne with my shrimp so much, but you can see I'm getting a lot of babies coming out. Lots and lots of babies. Dirty glass. Dirty, dirty glass. This tank makes me sad. I had a male zebra caras. The females in there. This is a real soft water, but the male jumped out and it had this weird kind of algae. Here you see where I sprayed it with the hydrogen peroxide where it's white. It was actually all over here, but the hydrogen peroxide I've been wiping it out. And then this, there's a Congo Tetra breeding group in there, believe it or not. I know it looks funky, especially with the no filter. Can't even see in there. But I think it, the fish are in, are in there. Oh, see there, one just came up. Thought I was feeding them. They're healthy in there. I think it's because they breed in there all the time. I don't know if the proteins that they make from their eggs and I don't know. There's a lot of protein. Let me just say that protein film is thick. So I don't know how they cause all that, but it doesn't hurt them. They like it or it doesn't hurt them. They don't mind it. They're in there breeding there. They go crazy happy. And you can see next to the tank right next to it is absolutely crystal clear with the plants. It's got cardinals and some pro Procatapus similis. But yeah, for some reason these Congo touches. Here, I'll go ahead and feed them. That way you guys can kind of just shows that it's not something to be scared of. There they go. Oh yeah, see them flying around down there? They're going crazy. So thick I can't even blow it away. Whoa! But they're lively. They're definitely lively in there. So don't freak out about that too much. You can get a paper towel or use a pump to siphon off the top of it. And they do make skimmers for that. And then as the Cardinals and Procatopus similis, as I mentioned before, kind of hard to see with them all on the floor. We got plants. We got Shelly's in here. We got big Dora TI and Dwarf Neons in here. This one's got a bunch of plants. And see, even in this green water, plants will grow right up underneath it. There's catfish and rainbows in there. Pick this. I think there's a breeding group of emperor tetras in there. Nothing but Daphnia. And you can see how some, like, same tanks, they're all very random. See how that one's just growing algae like crazy right where that light's at? Same thing, protein film. And you can see here with minimal light, like, these plants, a lot of plants, especially mosses, really don't need that much light. Ferns especially. This one's got two on it. This one's like green. Because it doesn't have fast enough absorbing plants in it. But when you got a biomass just full of guppy grass of, as such, then it stays clear. Here has a huge thing of moss. The algae's taken its place. Empty, empty. We got cherry barbs, cherry barbs, cherry barbs, no plants cherry barbs plants and nothing really in there i do got some air plants i've got going over here i've been testing out weird kind of setup and we got a bunch of different tetras in there cpd breeders in here i'm hoping they're dropping eggs in there but i can't really see with the two by four so i'm hoping they're scattering within the moss dropping it down there and then the babies can live down there and we got some rare rainbows in here but yeah some of these scummy tanks the best thing to do when it gets scummy like that is scrape all you can off and out get that gunk out and then water change little by little if you do too extreme then you run risk of causing problems depending on your water too though some it doesn't matter you can just run the stuff through and these are empty because i can't even get to them and we got sea alani in there corkscrew valve we've got panda guards in there and all kinds of other plants we got the barbs down here i cannot wait to get these guys off the floor they don't seem to have been mining it too much in there and you notice too where i've got a power head that tank is just it doesn't help with the algae power heads and filters in my opinion if they don't have carbon in them they can be more problematic to algae than without but the carbon carbon keep your keep up on your carbon it'll help you out a lot and no fluorescent cell carbon is not the same 
Now I did get some Daphne in with these blue dreams, but you can see where they're still braiding out like crazy. Look at all them babies down there. And I feed these Daphne into the fish. More blue dreams, more crypts, mosses, other random plants. Taiwan Lily is really liking this softer water here. Oh, hello guys, I've missed you. Oh, look at that BBA, like crazy. See, I'd just be best taking that out, spray it with some hydrogen peroxide, scrape this all out, siphon it out, and then it should be fresh. Which the big reason why I made this video is because this was all full of storage. This rack's gonna get moved real soon, hopefully tonight if I could get to it. And these are all gonna be moved, and that's gonna be the beginning of the new big build of the fish room. Yeah, of course, as well as this. But this is what got me to organize all that was here, as well as all that up there. So it's a lot of hokey pokey with my stuff, turning everything around, but organization is key. And that's what I'm trying to do. If you look in here though, this tank's doing really phenomenal. There's nothing in there because I'm not throwing food in there, which that causes a lot of the green water, a lot of the algae issues, as well as the waste, the food, what goes into the ecosystem. When you're not throwing anything in there, then it's easier to keep clean and clear. Now what I would do, see this dead plant here? Get all the snails off of it because you want those in your tank. They can eat up your algae and everything. Dead decaying material like they're doing here. But take this out so it doesn't turn into waste, which turns in that kind of algae. But boy, look how waxy and shiny the leaves are on this balance egg grip. Looks like the snails are eating a lot of the new growth though. Usually I don't see that much eating off of new growth. It must really like this type of plant and that's another thing too that i didn't mention into this is when you get allopathy between plants too what will cause a lot of that convergence of the algae is the allopathy that plants have between each other so if they don't get along with each other algae likes to get in between then it's battle royale between the algae and then the plants that don't like each other but there is some massive biomasses of plants in here and as your biomasses get bigger the better job they'll do and then in this super green water tank, got different types of plants. Got rainbows in here, it needs a good scraping. You can see there's actually a lot of clean, healthy plants underneath there. At least one of Oh, there's one. Oh, these are the bowman eye. Only problem with these rainbow fish is I think they're too old to breed at this point. And then as I showed you earlier, here we got the rope fish. Has some nice Brazilian pennywort on top. But there's a quick run through, run view of what the fish room is like now. But the other day I had a huge epiphany on how I was going to do this fish room, what I was going to do with it. Like I had plenty of ideas in my head, but like wasn't things really, like certain things weren't solidified because I always like to flow with the water, let things grow as I'm in the space because then your mind gets wrapped around it more. And I have been drawing it out. So I know pretty much all the fish that are going to go into the tanks that are going into here, the different sections. I've got it all kind of lined out. Here, let me just show you real quick. So that space is this space. And then this is what it's going to be like part of it, sort of. 75s I'm not going to be able to fit, but I've got all the fish here for all that. I don't want to show that too much. But I had an awesome epiphany just the other day of how I was gonna do this fish room, more of what I was gonna do with it. It has gotten me even more excited than even when I got it. Like, I don't, I, I can't wait to get this out. I'm excited to build this fish room up and show you guys because I've kept fish rooms before. I've seen many fish rooms and I think this will be unique. I think something you guys would all enjoy. I know I'm gonna enjoy it definitely. And big shout out and thank you, thank you all who watch, subscribe, hit the thumbs up, super chat, Patreon members, all of you guys, orders from LRBAquatics.com, all of you guys, thank you, thank you, thank you, because without you guys, this wouldn't be possible, and you guys have been helping me continue to grow here, because it hasn't been easy, but it is going forward, I'm so super excited about it, so hit the subscribe button if you want to see what comes out of all this how we build this from the bottom and work our way up to it because every week it's changing and also same with the channel we're going to start rebranding the channel we're going to get more serious about it we're just kind of waiting to get more organized in here before we do so but i'm excited about that whole rebrand i've got the whole ideas all of it written out and uh 
yeah lots to come here thank you so much for your guys's patience as well because this is like a fine wine and i've been working hard on getting it built fast for you guys too so if you could do me a favor hit that like button hey let me know if you got questions about this i love to help people out on their aquariums and their experiences and going through of all of it because i've been through a lot of it for those who know me those who are new you'll learn you'll get to understand also in this fish room tour video i wish i could talk more about like symbiotic relationships other things but we'll get into more of that as the channel evolves you guys will be able to pick up more of that we'll make special videos for that kind of stuff let me know your questions down down below maybe we'll make a video out of it here in the future but this video will be long enough as it is already but more to come if you like and subscribe and here in the future we'll have full build videos of all this going on i've been shooting clips of all of it okay so you guys want to do something like that too and you see wesley's already made a fort out of it this is how i top off fill off my tanks for the moment using a hose outside long long hose love these metal hose if you guys have never had a metal hose definitely recommend those those will last you forever just don't leave water in it if it's hot where you are because then it could pop the line but it's but it never tangles and it's easy to drag around a lot more easier than that mess look at the difference straight mess also made sure to get a good nozzle and use plumber's tape around this so i don't get much for drips besides what comes out of this nozzle once in a while the oldest killifish i've ever seen this thing is over five years old still trucking if you guys remember the fish hawkers if you guys remember the fish hawker series he was one of the he was the blue king that would run that mascara barb tank with the hill trout and eventually we'll have plumbing throughout the whole fish room that way i don't have to use the hose anymore that that'll be more second phase first phase get the tanks up and then we'll work into the plumbing systems because they can get pricey when you're doing a lot of which the plumbing line's not bad it's just the valves can get a little pricey the valves and the pieces the t's and the elbows but yeah can't wait to get it cleaned up a little scraping will go a long way water changes and get everything put up. Hi, Kitty made it. What's up, girl? That's a long walk for you. Cat in the barn. And if you guys look at the layout, you can kind of see where I'm going with it a little bit. Real visions will come on the wall. Another open spaces. And here in the next month, it's all gonna be different. Look at that, I already got that ready to go. Boom, that's a big piece. Don't worry, we'll get it cleaned up. So stay in tune for that and all the variables. And until next time, everybody, peace. Have a great one.